Good evening. Ooh, that was loud. How are you tonight? Okay, you're very quiet for a fitness crowd. I'm going to ask one more time. How are you feeling tonight? Are you excited for our guests to come out? So um, thank you very much for being here. My name is Jay Blonick, and I am the Director of Fitness for Health Technologies at Apple. Um, I work at our headquarters in Cupertino, California, and I'm thrilled to be here at the Apple Store in Sydney. It is a very exciting time for health and fitness um, at Apple. Health and fitness apps have never been more popular. And with the launch of the Apple Watch, it's our first product that was designed to actually help people live a better day by being more active. And one of the greatest parts about Apple getting more engaged in health and fitness is that we've had the opportunity to make a lot of new friends from the health and fitness industry and be inspired by the work that they do. And I'm about to bring one of those new friends out here tonight. Her fitness journey started in 2009. She began by working at a women's only health and fitness facility. And she quickly realized that one of the unanimous goals that she found many of her clients had was that they just wanted more body confidence. But many of the techniques that she was taught didn't seem to be providing those results as often as her clients would like. So she began experimenting with her own programs and developing her own techniques. And she branched out, started her own business, and decided that she wanted to bring her message to more women of the world. Now she has over four million followers on Instagram, three and a half million on Facebook. In October, Ernst & Young named her one of their entrepreneurs of the year. And just last month, Cosmopolitan named her their social media star of the year and their woman of the year. Could you please help me welcome to the stage, Kayla Itzinas. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hi. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So obviously, I knew all about you, but today was the first day I got to meet you, and we've uh, been spending some time in the green room together, and... Um, it's very easy for me to see why um, you've resonated with so many people. I've thank had you. more fun in the last couple of hours than <laughs> since I got here yesterday. So thank you for being here. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, she's also got a lot of really good jokes, which I'm not going to tell. They're, no. they're suddenly personal and private. <laughs> yes. So my first question for you is actually something that I am just fascinated by, which is the entire fitness industry of personal training is built around that idea of one-on-one -on -one training. And actually, your entire program is about reaching people when you're not actually there in person. And that really flips the entire industry on its head. Tell me a little bit about why you feel um, what you're doing has been successful and why it's resonated with people. Um, why I feel it's successful? Um, because I don't make it about me. I make it about you girls. Um, so hands up really quickly who does my app or my guides. There you go. So I try and make it about the girls and make it about the community and bring them together. And that's why I feel like, um, well, I guess we're just a massive team. And I guess you girls would feel that as well, that we're just a big team. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I don't like saying I'm successful. I'm just not one of those people. So I think the girls and the success of the girls are what brings it together and makes it so awesome. It's amazing. So I found out that even though you're, you are deeply involved in helping get your message out to women of the world, all around the world, you also still have regular clients that you train yes. in person. Yes. So I'm fascinated by that. And I, what I'm interested in knowing is who are they? And you know, what are you doing with them to train? And, um, and how do you fit that into your busy schedule? Um, so I do have one-on-one -on -one clients that I do train still, and I don't really advertise that, but um, I don't pick pick and choose clients. I had like, for example, one of the stories is I was at a cafe and I was sitting down with my family and we we're having lunch and a lady came up to me. She said, hi, my name's Kylie. I just wanted to say big well done. I uh, follow your page and I saw a girl that you stretched out her legs and she was able to walk properly again. And anyway, I didn't come over for that. I just wanted to say well done because it resonates with me because I've got a sore leg. Anyway, bye. And she went to walk off and I said to her, wait. And I grabbed her arm and I said, what leg sore? She said, this leg. I said, where's it sore? She said, here. She goes, you know what? Don't worry, Kayla. Like, I'm bothering you. She goes, I'm really sorry to my family. She's like, I'm really sorry, guys. And I said, no, here's my house address. I want you to come over on Wednesday morning and I'll stretch out your leg. She's like, no. She started crying. She's like, no, 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 no. Honestly, I didn't come over for that. I just wanted to say, well done. 
So for 10 weeks straight, she came over to my house and I stretched out her leg and still to this day, she's my client, she comes to the gym, but still to this day, she sends me flowers every week to my house. So like, she's just the best person. So these are the kind of people that I guess I, I, I pick to be my clients, people that need help and, and, and that come up to me. It's everyday people. It's not like I pick you and I pick you. It's people that come up and say, I really need your help. Kayla, can you help me? And they end up at my gym. Yeah. And I would imagine that continuing to train clients helps you figure out what you want to do next with your programs and helps you stay connected to what it is you want to deliver? Well, it keeps me grounded. It keeps me, um, I don't know, like I train a lot of my family and, um, yeah, I guess it just keeps me grounded and, and keeps me updated and aware of what women want. Like, that, I've just released my app, if you guys didn't, didn't know already. Like, sweat with Kayla. Um, no, I just released that and I literally sat my, the girls in my office down and my clients down. I was like, what do you guys want? Like, tell me what you want so I can put it in that app and make it good for you. Well, speaking of that, so your programs, obviously people I know in California at the gym that I work out at, I often see women that are my friends using um, your guides. But I know that you started originally with downloadable programs yeah. that people would be obviously viewing on digital devices, but you did just release a new app. And um, I'm interested in knowing about that progression. Like, why an app now? Obviously, what you were doing was very successful. What, what more comes with an app, and what are your plans in that space? Um, so with the guides, I guess, as you girls would know, they're sent to you, and I wanted the girls to um, be able to feel like I was with them. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to be innovative. I wanted them to be able to um, feel like I'm always with them. And with the app, I can put new challenges in. I can I can help the girls and I can coach them. So basically, now it's a coaching platform rather than just sent the guides. And I'm hoping to be able to. Well, it'll be exciting to be able to expand the app and and bring the community together through it. We can organise world tours through it. We can organise a community involvement through it. We can organise so much more through an app. And it's just, yeah, I guess, yeah, personal trainer in your pocket. I want to be able to, them to feel like they're with me, training them every day. So we talked about this before you came out, but you have millions of followers on social media. And obviously everyone in the world today tries to use social media as a way to expand their business. Why do you think, in your particular case... You've been, you've been so successful. Like, what about the way you're doing it um, has been great for your business? And what have you learned? Um, well, I said that at the start. Like, I feel like because I didn't make it about me, I didn't want... I never started Instagram to make a business. When I started Instagram, guys, and I'm, like, talking to you now, no, completely normal, I didn't even know that people could follow you. So I, my little cousin came out to me and she's like, because I kept trying to show her these progress photos that I had my clients, I was doing my clients. And I kept trying to show her and I kept scrolling up. She goes, why don't you just download Instagram and store your client photos in there? I said, oh, okay. So I downloaded Instagram. I'm this is really good. And then my sister and my cousin came out to me and they're like, you better reply. I said, to what? And they're like, to the people that are asking for you to help them. I said, what people? I said, isn't this like Facebook where you accept them as they... And they're like, no, you've got yours on public. Like, people are following and asking you questions. This is when Instagram first came out, so I had no idea how to use it. So I never started it to create this. This is just how it's... I think it's why I am where I am and why you girls are where you are, because we're just, like, a team. Like, this has happened together. This isn't me, yeah, That, that reminds me of the stories we were talking about upstairs about our parents and how they don't really understand yeah, how they to don't use Facebook. Get it. That's it's, fantastic to know that you had no idea how it worked. Yeah, yeah we're I saying that... that it, it grounds you to, like, I was saying my, my grandparents don't understand. They don't understand what I do. And I like that because it grounds me because I get to go there and I get to relax. They're like, oh, you know, you're a trainer in a gym. This isn't sustainable. You don't do anything. You're weak. And like, they're Greek. Like, they're so cute. I love them so much. Like, you, if you've seen my well, grandpa. Well, I'm going to tell you, I hope this is okay. She, when she first made it in the newspaper, her grandfather thought, it was something was wrong. What yeah, did you do? He's like, what did you do? Didn't read the article. Like, I didn't do anything. She's not arrested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a record, really positive article saying like, oh, this is a new trainer in Adelaide. And I like, went there all happy. And he's like, what did you do? I didn't do anything. This is a good article. This is, but you can't read English. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when you're developing programs, I think one of the interesting parts is you're reaching women across the world. And probably men as well, but I know your focus is on women. women. <laughs> and uh, obviously every woman has different needs, even though you'd said the kind of one goal is everyone wants body confidence. Do you find it challenging to create programs that are going to work for so many different people? 
but you're not with them all. And, and sort of what do you think about when you're developing a program? Um, well, when Toby and I, so Toby, there you go, Toby. When Toby and I created the, yeah, oh, the girl's like, where is he? <laughs> um, Toby got a bigger cheer than me. Like when I went on the world tour and they, Toby came out, they're like, whoa, take your top off. And I'm like, hey, hey. <laughs> um, when we created the programs, we didn't create them for, um, for example, one type. So we didn't create them for weight loss or weight gain or this or that. We created them to help women feel motivated and to feel inspired and to feel like they did something challenging and um, to build a community of women, well, unintentionally build a community of women that are able to work together. And it's not, the exercises aren't hard, hard exercises. It's about pushing yourself. And I think you girls would feel that as well. You do it with a friend and you feel motivated because it is, it's a, it's, it's a little bit hard, but you feel, <laughs> everyone's like, Kayla. But um, yeah, it's a little bit hard, but you feel motivated and you feel good after. And that's why we created the pants, for women to feel good. So I've, I've done it. <laughs> Wanted to make sure I got it. It's hard. Officially, it's hard. Yeah. And we were going to have a burpee challenge. Yeah, but you I'm said, not gonna I was going to say, you yet. asked for the burpee challenge, then you, yeah. you chickened out. Well, yeah. And then Toby said, how about an arm wrestling challenge? And I'm like, no thanks. I, <laughs> I understand when I'm in over my head. So um, what I was fascinated with is a story that we spoke about earlier, which is you recently did a world tour and you actually went from digital to physical. So you were physical, digital, yes. back to physical. Um, I'm curious because what you said was your first event, you were hoping that a few hundred people would show up and then a few thousand people showed up. Yeah. So what went through your mind when suddenly a few thousand people were there and what are your plans for doing more of that? Um, well, okay, so I re released the guides in 2014. So this is new for me. Like to be here is firstly just the biggest blessing in the world. I never thought I'd be sitting here and speaking. Um, and the feeling that you get is you cannot describe that feeling. Like, I, I, but I was saying before, like, because it's, it, what we're saying is lots of guys at these, at these events, and I said, it's going to be a lot of women, and you're going to feel this positive energy, and you're going to feel their happiness, and you're going to feel it, like, radiate through the room, and that's what it felt like for me. It's just like, I, it was a, I guess it's like a hit me in the chest, motivation, inspiration, it hit me rather than hitting them. So that feeling was, yeah, absolutely incredible. And what's the second question? Uh. More plans for oh, I, I, more plans back? would be to no, like to come and do more events oh, or definitely in I'm not going to say when but in 2016 I will be back and I will be doing that again because that's the best feeling in the world. It was so so much fun. Sure for them as well. And yeah. we've we've mentioned guys. I joked about this. Is there any plans for the male version? The, to <laughs> the male no. version? <laughs> yeah. Toby. The boy. There, the boy. But yeah. <laughs> Toby's like. Mm -mm. No, it's really funny because, like, the, we had the world tour and then you see, like, this, this whole room filled with women and there's this one guy that's like, why did you bring me to this event? Why did you drag me here? And then there's, like, the, the guys that, like, they don't care. They're like, yeah, I do the guys. It's like BBG boys or, like, BBG men. I'm like, good on them. Like, yeah, but at the moment, it's just women and what I can do for women now. I've, I, I started off in a women's only personal training center. I've always trained women. It's just what I do. Speedo, body... The speedo guide. body guide, that's, yes. what, that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> so you spend your life and career inspiring people from a you know, personal fitness standpoint. Who is your inspiration? You guys literally are my inspiration. And that's not me being like, oh, no, you guys. Like, literally, you guys. I follow only BBG girls. Even if you go on right now, I only follow girls that do my guides, my apps, the mums. The mums are so inspiring. Um, we were just chatting before about people that were saying like shredding for the wedding, like jokes like that. But like women that are so motivated to when they're about, yeah, there you go, that's you. <laughs> there you go. Like that, that is inspirational to me. Like I feel like I'm going to cry, but like that, these are the people that motivate me, everyday people. I even uploaded a photo today of my driver that drives me around. Like, I have a lunch with him. He's so patient and he's so kind and that inspires me. It's just everyday people and people that um, lift others up that inspire me. Not to make you more emotional, but share a story with us of one of your, one of your favorite stories from online or a real client. Um, there's so many different stories. Um, one of the most amazing ones was, and I probably, some of you girls would follow M. Carey. 
um, some nods there. Um, M was actually in a skydiving um, accident and she was paralysed and she couldn't walk and she went through her rehab and I literally looked over the crowd at one of my boot camps and she was standing in the crowd and she was doing the exercises and I was watching it like she wasn't doing them well, obviously, but she was doing them to the best of her ability and I just broke down in tears and she didn't even realise that I knew who she was and I just gave her the biggest hug in the world. Like, these are the stories that inspire me and... I, I've got my client, um, another girl, Y Charlie. I don't know if you know that name. Yes or not? There you go. She has, like, I'm not even going to name how many um, autoimmune disorders that she's been diagnosed with. She was told that she was going to die when she was 11. And she's alive today. And, like, again, these people are the people that inspire me. I'm not going to cry. So what's the future hold? I know you, you probably are planning and thinking, but... Some yeah. of this must be really unexpected. I mean, I can tell from talking Look to at me, you I'm this like, is unexpected. I don't know if I'm cold or if I'm nervous or I don't know what I am. <laughs> Probably but, both. But, um, but do you, I mean, now that this, this train has left the station, do you, what are your plans for the future? Um, I guess we're just constantly weaving, Toby and I, uh, constantly innovating and, and trying to create um, better ways to be able to help women. I, I want to get more involved with the empowerment of women and making you guys feel good and making you guys feel strong and making sure that you guys feel beautiful, not necessarily how you look, but how you feel. So that's just what's in store. And, and again, I'll be back 2016 with the tours and, and lots, lots more to come. So I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to go into client mode, and I'm going to ask you a question that's a typical fitness question that someone like you might get asked, but I think it's really important. What, what do you think are the single biggest barriers for people when they're trying to get healthier or fit? What are the things that we allow to get in our way, or what are the things that cause us to not stay in a fitness program, what have you experienced? What I've, what I've found with my clients is women who try and do too much too fast. So you suddenly get this burst of motivation. You're like, I'm going to do this, 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 this. And then you can't maintain it. And I, I've done it before. And you can't maintain it. And you feel like you've hit a brick wall. And, you, and you, it's too hard. And, and you feel like health and fitness is not the thing for you. And you look around. And you see all these women who are super, super motivated. And you look up to them. And you think, why can I be like that? So it's almost the too much too fast. It's all about just easing into it. That's why I said about you guys feeling good about yourselves first before you go and say, this is how I look and this is what I want to do and this is this. It's focus on how you feel and feel happy first and then concentrate on your journey and you'll do it slowly, slowly. So what about somebody, I mean, you have a motivated, really motivated group of people who follow you. Amazing. What if, yeah, what if somebody, if they hear this podcast or maybe they're here tonight and exercise is brand new to them. It's the first, you know, they've a burpees doesn't make a sense. They don't know what that means, know what let means. alone doing one, right? If you said do a burpee, they would just stand there. It's, it's literally, they haven't even taken their first steps. What, what, what advice would you give to somebody like that? Um, I think everyone in this room would agree that this is why the community is so good because we, we, as a team, accept everyone. And, and, there are, and you would see it. There are girls who have literally never done exercise before in their life and they feel so welcome and so safe in this community. They can come in at any time and at any time they, and it, for the girls here who are new and who haven't, haven't started, they grab friends, they, they meet people that, they, that, some of the girls that came to the world tour, they came by themselves and they said to me, like they came in a group, they said, can we go grab a photo? I said, oh, did you guys go to school together? Like, no, we just met today. I'm like, this is why it's so cool. This is why I love this community because you can join and everyone makes you feel so, so welcome. That's great. So um, do you have time for a few questions? Yeah, if anyone has questions. We'd yeah. love if any of you would like to join in the conversation. We have, we have someone with a mic, I believe. So if you have a question, raise your hand and we'll bring the mic to you. Just talk to me because I'm nervous. <laughs> someone be brave with the first question. Really? Nothing? <laughs> I answered everything. Oh, there we go. Hi. You get the lucky spot next to Toby. <laughs> um, as you're fairly new to this, how would you say you kind of overcome your fears, I guess, talking to all of us? Um, yeah, that's a good one. Are you training one. yourself in media or are you just kind of rolling? Look at rolling? me, I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh. No, 
Um, but I mean, you've spoken very well today. So thank you. Gonna, yeah. Thank you. Um, so one of my biggest fears were public speaking. I remember, I don't know if you guys have like SRC in like year seven, where you get to be like the head. Anyway, so I like, we, everyone had to make a speech and then you'd vote as a class. And that made me so nervous. And I remember standing there with my speech and it would literally be crinkling in my hands as I shook trying to read this speech out. So for me, like, and, and that was the good thing about Cosmo Awards. It was about being fun and fearless. And one of those things was overcoming this public speaking thing, which I still am a bit nervous about. But um, no, I haven't had media training or whatever. I just sort of, I think if you're honest and you believe in what you say and what you do, you, you can just answer the questions as they go and, and answer how you feel. If I was trying to be fake or if I was trying to say something that I didn't mean, it'd be really hard for me to speak. But I'm just saying what I feel and it's sort of just rolling off as I'm, as I'm talking to you and now I'm talking to you and no one else is here. <laughs> Actually, I mean, before I ask for the next question, I think, I think it would be really great to know, uh, extending that, that bit of advice, for other women your age, just from a business perspective, I mean, forget your motivation in fitness. You've also built a really, really great business at a very young age. Thank you. What, um, what advice would you give from that perspective? I mean, obviously, learning to speak authentically and those kinds of things are important. What else have you learned from a business perspective? Um, my advice, I guess, would just be, like I just said, like, to be honest, stick to your morals. And I was saying the other day, um, I went to a photo shoot. I don't know if you guys saw, but they were like, we really want you to wear a bikini and stand by the pool and we're just going to tip some oil over you. And I was like, oh, is it okay if I, if I don't do that? Because I, I don't feel comfortable with someone taking photos of me because they could, they could end up being very provocative and I'm not like that. Like, see, like, what I'm wearing. <laughs> like, I'm not like that at all. And they were like, no, that's fine. And it's, it's about being honest and, and stepping forward and saying, I'm not comfortable with that. And, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a princess by any means. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. But it's just, it's certain things that you, you've stuck to and you've, you've grown up with your whole life. And it's like, it's like my family. Like, I, I, the people are like, oh, are you are going to move from Adelaide? No, because I love my family so, so much and I can't leave them, like my little Greek family. So, yeah, it's about being honest and sticking to your morals. I've said that about five times, but. We have another question from the audience? Yeah. Yes. A man in the house. Oh, no. So, um, I, I first started following you about a year ago. And I was quite surprised that you had haters because I see all the glossy things. So my question is, have you learned to deal better with the, the jealous haters of the world? Um, I guess, and I actually get this question a lot, and it's, it's the positivity that surrounds this community, like in this room, the positivity that surrounds this community far, far outweighs the negativity. And a lot of the people that, um, well, not a lot because there's not many, but the people that you know, might hate on me or might have something to say, I guess, have never met me and you can't really, they can't let it define you. Like I said, if you're honest and you, you honestly want to help people and you're doing the best, you're doing the best you can do, I guess, like, again, the positivity around it. You just, like, look at this, like, this community, like, the people that are here today, like, this is just absolutely incredible, incredible, amazing. Yeah. Just have to plug your ears against the haters. I know, yes. and like a lot of people, and just talking to you now, and you guys, there's, there might be a thousand amazing comments, and then there's this one comment, and it's like one girl talking to another girl, it's like, mm, her leg look weird, weird in this photo. And you're like, oh, does my leg... Like, for a second, you're like, no, no, like, don't, don't even, don't, don't pay attention to that. Um, so I know you guys see that one little negative comment, but just let it, let it fly, just, it's... You've got to look at someone and think, what's happened in your life for you to speak to me like that, rather than going, oh... Do I? Yeah. Change your mindset. Anyone else? Oh, now the hands are going up. Yeah, because I, I like talking to people. Talk to me. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering for next year when you're doing the world tour again. Um, so I'm from Ireland. Are you living here now? But are you going to ask me if I'm going to come to Ireland? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I am. Because then there's a lot of people in Ireland who want to see you. There, I literally <laughs> will try and go to as many places as long as it's yeah. warm. No. Um, it's not warm. <laughs> It's not no, no, I, I know, know you had warm. a trouble, troubling time in London, but it's uh, even colder oh, in Ireland. So. It, was, it was hilarious because London really was bad. summertime and I was complaining and everyone was laughing at me like, this is the <laughs> middle of summer, Kayla. I'm freezing with this jacket on in the morning. Um, but yes, I will try to go to as many places as I can. It's literally I think that, I think that was a good challenge. You just put it out to her now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, going to oh, be God. a little hard for her. Yeah. <laughs> a new spot added to the tour. We had a couple of other questions in the back. I was literally about to ask, are you coming to England? Because we're from England. But um, <laughs> I'll ask something else instead. Um, yeah, are you so, visiting? 
Yeah, we're just on oh, holiday. Oh, but yeah. it just was a really big coincidence. <laughs> it yeah, worked out no, well. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally going to try and go to as many places as I can. It's so amazing. It's, it's so cool because the world tour we did was free. So we were just like, yep, yeah, just rock up and be friends and, and meet each other because they got to see each other on Instagram, but they never got to actually meet. And it was so... Because I got to see... I don't know if you guys were... You came to the Sydney one, but I got to see everyone from above. So I was, like, staring down like a bit of a creep. I was like, oh, I can see everyone. And, like, they were running up to each other and hugging each other, and I knew they hadn't seen each other before. It was the first time, and that was just the best feeling. So I'm going to try and bring that feeling all across the world. So your quest to come to England, you didn't mention a specific city. This might be your time to ask for it. Um, I guess uh, up north, like, <laughs> which is, again, even colder. I, I will so. try. I will yeah. try my best. <laughs> Maybe you'll have um, to come to London. That's yeah. yeah, I might have to travel down. Okay. <laughs> but um, our question was, um, you have said on Instagram that you do have the odd cheat day. Yeah. Um, what's like your favourite treat on cheat day? Um, J- just so you know, that was actually one of my first questions really? for when I sat down. I'm <laughs> okay. like, okay, so spill the beans. It's I want to know <laughs> when you go crazy and you're like, I need to have a food attack. What is it that you go after? Right? Um, that's a good question. And I don't she have wouldn't a, tell me, but she's gonna, a, she said she'd share it today. I don't have a cheat day where I eat bad food for a day. Um, and I don't have a cheat meal. I probably have just cheat things, I guess. I, I'm one of those people that, I've got to be realistic. Like, people said to me, like, why do you have coffee as a recommendation? I'm like, because women like coffee. And I'm not going to say for them not to have their coffee because they will kill me. So I've got to be realistic. And I, and I am realistic with myself. If I go to, and I was saying this before, someone came up to me, they're like, oh, my nonna made pasta. And I, I, what, what do I do? My response is eat the pasta. That is your nonna. And you're, you, you never know something, God, God forbid, might happen to her. Eat the pasta. Have the cake if you want to have the cake. Not all the time, but just enough to ma- not make you go insane. Because I know girls love their chocolate or they love their cake or they love whatever they love. Have it. Not, not have it for a cheat day, but have it. Like, I've got to be realistic. And, and I think that's why girls don't want to kill me. Because <laughs> I let them have that. Well, I think you said something to me. I'm going to share this. When you said, it's also about family. The, the pasta example is, yeah. I'm going over for a family dinner and family first. It's, it's, it's literally family first. And like, you guys would understand that. If your mum makes a signature dish and it's bad, just eat it. Like, just have the dish. It's your mum. Like, you'll never get that food ever again. And you regret it if you don't eat it now. There you go. You're telling her off. That's good. <laughs> we have another question. Hi. There's a couple um, here, and then we have someone right there, too. But let's, I think the mic's over this way. Um, yeah. My question is, is there something that you can say to yourself, or is there a phrase or, like, motivational sentence that you use yourself to keep yourself motivated? Like, when you hit week six and everything's just a bit rubbish. And More like week nine. It's, like, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it's, it's not necessarily something I say to myself. Like I said, I find motivation and inspiration through the women and um, some men that do... The <laughs> I don't know if you do the guides, actually. You do do the guides. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, that is so good. Um, so I find inspiration that way. So if I'm ever feeling, like, sluggish or, um, you know, I don't... Um, you know, so it's a mindset thing. Like, you don't want to do something. I look at Instagram. I go on Facebook. I, I My Instagram direct message people are like, mm, who runs your Instagram account? Me. Like, I, I literally recognize people. So I speak to them, like, through direct message. I'm like, hey, what are you doing today? Like, it's, like, 3 o'clock in the morning and they wake up for me. But, like, it's, like, they're just the best people. So that's what I, like, how I pet myself up. We have another question. I know there's one on this side. If there's one more here where the mic's close. But, oh, you've got it already. Great. Yeah, my, my question's actually similar. Um, something I've been trying to do is wake up earlier every day. Yeah. And I know that, you know, you get up at 5 a.m. or, like, 6 a.m., and I would love to know what, like, what, do you have any tips on how to wake up earlier Earlier. if you want to get your exercise done? Because so often I'll, like, snooze and then... I would love to sleep. (laughs) I've, I've, um, I've actually done this for, since I was younger, so when I first ever started off personal training, I had to be at the gym at 4 4.45 to have my client ready. So I've always woken up that way. So for me to sleep, so for example, if I got up at 7.30, I would think I've wasted the entire day. Like that's just, that's crazy for me. But for you, what time do you go to sleep? 
Yeah, see, that's, that, that's way past my bedtime. And 10.30 is like way past my bedtime. 9.30, I'm out. 9.30, wake up at 5 every day. So it's, it's got about going to bed early and having that balance through the day. Yeah. Just got to do it. I was going to say, it just sounds like it's a math problem, right? You want to yeah. get up earlier, you got to go to bed earlier. Do you know what I do, earlier. actually? I, put, I have a heater that I have in my bathroom. So when I get up, I quickly run and put the heater in my bathroom. Because you know when you get in the shower and you get out, this it's cold really cold. This cold thing's like a for real thing for you, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Like, yeah, like I can't deal with the cold. So I get out of the shower <laughs> and it's still warm. So I'm like, okay, this is okay. Toby hates it. He's like, turn that off. But yeah, no, it's good. It doesn't make you fall back to sleep. No, no, it's good. I, like, I just like being warm. And it's a reward <laughs> if you get out of bed. That's it. <laughs> Got it. Do we have another question over on this side? A couple in the back. Um, you're obviously so organized. Do you have any special strategies for managing your time? I'm organized. <laughs> I love cleanliness. Is that what you mean? Like my cleaning? No, just doing so much, like training oh, people, doing so, um, events like this. I, I, like, I, like I said, I don't know any different. I, I like moving and I'm very, like, so you look at my foot. My foot's been doing this the whole time. I'm very fidgety. I, I enjoy moving, I guess. You can't really teach that. You have to be, that, and that's why I said, like, use the girls as motivation because it makes me move. It makes me, yeah, want to do more. You've got you've to have drive. And everyone does have that drive. You've just got to find what area drives you. We have a time for a couple more questions. You were shy at first, now the hands are just going up. I this like is fantastic. It. Good. Um, so my question is, you've been working out or like starting your, or like your um, training in like 2008. Do you still do the guides yourself? Because like... Yes. Like did, you, did you see me the other day? I did like the leg challenge. I was like, that's oh, easy because I, I put the challenge together. So, you know, it'd be, and I was like, who is Kayla? I hate her. No, but like, no, I do. I, I've done, I've trained like that since... I left school, um, and when we, Toby and I, sat down together to make the guides, Toby literally was like, both of us would just like put everything that we do into the guides, because that's how we train our clients, and that's how I train myself. I literally just flick through. Now, I don't, I don't maybe I don't follow the app, like, because for, for the girls who are wondering how to change a week, that's actually coming. We've actually updated that, so you can change a week whenever you want. So I've just been changing the week as a week seven, week nine. I'll go up to week 16. I do my own guides. Do you ever get mad at yourself? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> why did I? I'm just like, this? why? Like week nine, like, do you know why? Week nine, I was doing the weeks and I really thought that week nine and 11 was the end. So I was like, I'm going to make this so hard. And then I turned to Toby and I was like, oh, damn, I've got another like two weeks to put in. So week nine and 11, it's like, I'm like, oh my God, this is so hard. And like lots of girls like have this joke that week nine is literally the hardest week ever because I was trying to make it super, super hard to be the last week. But now because we've got the app, it's continually changing and you get 3.0 and 4.0 and 5.0. So yeah. So I, I have one question before we get to, I think there was a couple others right out there, um, which I found really interesting. As I'm a vegetarian. So one of the things that is interesting about your food guide is right up front, you've done a lot to actually accommodate vegetarians, which yeah. um, I, don't, I don't think you're a vegetarian, right? Or no. are you? No, but you accommodate vegetarians. Tell me a little bit about that path because that isn't always the case for fitness programs. They sort of start not thinking about that. Um, so my message for women was to, I want you to eat healthy and which way you choose to do that is completely up to you. If you want to have vegan food, vegetarian food, if you want to have lots and lots of this and lots and lots of that, you can have it. So in my app now, it literally says, how old are you, this, that, and the other. And you fill it in, you say, how do you want to eat? Are you a vegan, are you vegetarian, or we just call it standard? Um, and you just choose, and, and it, it accommodates that. So I'm never telling women to eat one certain way. Like I said, you don't have to, like I'm saying, not, cut, not to cut out coffee. You can eat healthy, and which way you choose to do that is completely up to you. Great. We have time for let's, two, two more. Just, to, just in case you know if I was judging, this side's winning on the questions. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> do we have someone with the mic? Oh, perfect. Great. Sorry, I can't see. Um, so I was just wondering, um, young women, generally, their social events are like going out for lunch and obviously going out to the bar or something. And I know you don't drink. And I was just wondering how you deal with like the social pressures of, you know, when you go out having a, a bit of a feed. Alcohol or, in particular? Uh, Alcohol and basically just um, choosing the best thing at lunch and yeah. Um, so I, growing up in a Greek family, I've had home cooked meals. Luckily, 
with my mum. So I always tend to choose the healthy, anything that looks like a home-cooked meal option. So um, with food, I always go for something healthy because I know that if I don't, it will make me feel sick and I know it's not worth it and I don't have time to feel sluggish because I'm doing so much. Um, in terms of the pressures of alcohol... Um, Okay, well, I'll share this and I'll share this with you guys. And um, I don't know if I should share this, but I will. Um, I had a family member who um, decided that alcohol was a better choice than us and actually died from an alcohol overdose. So I got to watch the downward spiral of someone um, with alcohol and drugs. And for me, it's not worth it. And I don't want that for my little cousin. I don't want her to see she left behind a, a, a five-year-old, my little cousin Katie. And I don't want Katie to see me drinking. It's not worth it in my lifestyle. I don't enjoy alcohol. Um, I don't enjoy the way it makes me feel the next day. Um, I don't enjoy the way it makes me feel at the time. I don't like not having control of my body and my emotions and this and that. Um, so I choose not to drink it. And for me, it's an easy option. And for, for women, it's not. Um, and I understand the pressure and it's again it's really knowing yourself and what you want and what you want to stick to and yeah it's not a sob story um, I don't want people to feel sorry for me or whatever it's it's not that it's just raising awareness and I'm not anti-alcohol again I know people drink it so I say no and it's up to you ladies what you feel to go with it yeah Throw it to the side. How, how long um, after you released the guides did you think about doing an app and how long was the sort of planning stage? Of the app was literally the world tour. When the girls, when I saw the girls come together, I was like, there is, there's got to be a way to bring them together somehow through a platform, through a coaching platform. I want to offer them more um, than what I'm currently offering them. I want to make them have a better experience. So it was the world tour. So it's been really soon, the past few months. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I keep saying last one, but there's so many eager faces. Let's go back on the side since we haven't had as many over here. You're a really busy person. You've got so many things going on everywhere in different cities in Australia and all over the world. How do you manage, like, yourself, like, with working out and your clients and doing stuff with BBG and all of these things? And how do you not just get so over-exhausted with it all? Um, Toby is a massive help with that. So he's like the best person ever. Um, I guess, I don't know. I'm, I do, yeah, I do travel so much. Um, I use my guides. So it is the 28 minutes I am able to work out. Um, again, like for example, today I wasn't able to work out. You're not, again, you're not able to work out all the time. And I completely understand that. Um, it's about balance, and again, I always choose the healthy option, so I guess that's easy for me too. Um, I don't know. I guess that's really hard. Are you trying? Like, is it, well, is so it more I'm going to share something that I observe, which I think is really fantastic, and it's a great message for people that are in business, especially um, you know, young women that are just starting out in their careers. You have shared a lot about your team and how much they've helped you. And yeah. It's, you know, My God, you're, they're you're, amazing. It's, it's, you've made it clear to me that it's... It's not a one-woman show. There's there's a lot of people involved, and in that it's obviously everyone here, but also is, Toby yeah. and others that work with you. So yeah, Toby has is just absolutely incredible, um, and just so smart, so intelligent. Like um, any time that I guess when I first started Instagram, it was a big panic session when people would say something like, "Oh, I don't like," like I said, "I don't like her leg in that photo." Toby would be the one to be like, "Kayla, listen, like, calm, relax." Like he's been like the rock, I guess, and that sounds again so corny, but um, such a massive help. It's so good to have supportive people around you, and I guess it's why the community is built the way it is because I have such a supportive family, a big Greek family. I try and. I've tried to create a big Greek family, I guess. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, the girls are like my family now. And I'm, I don't mean that in like, a, oh, you're my family. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm being honest. Like, I really think they're my family. Yeah, it's like well, a big and, team. And, well, and your Greek family, from what I understand earlier speaking, loves to arm wrestle Toby, right? Like, everyone tries to arm <laughs> wrestle Toby. Like, oh, Toby, arm wrestle me. <laughs> but yeah, no, literally, I've got a video on my phone. It's like every single family member trying to arm wrestle Toby. But yeah, it's just, yeah, it's that, it's that, com that, community and that feel yes the best all right one last question who wants been here in the here, front can we have my mic. <laughs> so
So I know the app is new and everything, and at the end when you complete a workout, it says um, share, and I don't, I'm not sure, like, you know, where, yeah, or like, oh, no, not that, like, you can share, like, your thoughts about that workout or something. Where does that go, and are we going to be able to communicate with each other through the app? That's exactly what, okay, so that's an encourage others, so eventually you will be able to see every single girl where you can, see every single girl, something they've written about it, so like, keep going girls, or like, um, this one, circuit two was really hard this time, or like, I really hope you guys are having a good day, it's just like little messages that I want girls to be able to see, and eventually that should, I want to be able to, it will be exciting to be able to, because I don't want to say like, it's going to happen right now, but it will be exciting to be able to have girls be able to chat. And the people that are on that week be able to chat to each other and say, this is really hard. And then someone from America will be like, oh, I'm on here right now. Like, this is incredible. And you'll be able to chat through it. So that's some exciting new things that we're, we, we can possibly put in this app. Possibly. I'm going to say those words. So I want to thank you very much for being here. Thank You're you. incredibly inspiring. I also want to share with you that we get an opportunity to host a lot of events in our amazing stores. And here at this store, this event filled up faster than any other we've had before. And we love your community for being so supportive and coming in. And <laughs> I'm, I mean, I don't know when you promoted it, um, but- The guy oh, the show behind, behind you, he was dancing, he kind of stole the show, but- uh, He's got an audience, so he knows. Right. <laughs> so, so thank you for bringing your energy here to the store and thank you for bringing so much of your family thank to you. the store. Thank you all very much for being here. If you could help me give a warm round of applause Thanks, for Kayla. Guys. Thank you so much. No, clap yourselves, seriously, you're amazing. Guys, just once again, I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of, uh, of Apple and thank you so much, Kayla and thank Jay, you. for coming in. Um, if you do want to get involved in more events, community is exactly the right word. Jump online, jump onto the Apple Store app and join us for more events in store. One more time, we need to hear it again for these guys. Thank you. Seriously, biggest clap. Amazing, most amazing person. So Kayla's going to be here for a few minutes. For those of you that want to get a chance to say hello to her, come up and maybe take a photo. She's going to stay up on the stage, but I think we'll just have folks line up here. She's excited to meet all of you. And thank yeah, you seriously. once again for coming today to the event. And thank you so much, Kayla. Oh, thank you.